my name is Lynette Vernell Blocker Richmond. Okay, my parents were Janelle Blocker Sr. My mother's name was, was Eva Bell, Eva Bell Blocker. Uh, and we, I was born in Charlotte, North Carolina on the 19th of August, 1944. Okay. Uh, in 1963, I came here, it was, uh, August 19, 1963, I came here on my birthday. Wow. <laughs> um, I was, um, well, I was, I was sad because I was here by myself. Nobody knew who I was and, um, or cared that it was my birthday, you know, so I just, kind of ran up and down the sidewalk whenever they said my mother had called and I just ran straight to the office just to, just to say hello and for her to tell me happy birthday. I was here to take a class, a LPN class at the Riverside Hospital School of Practical Nursing. And I, uh, I, I, it was a, uh, it was a kind of a quickie thing. I was wanting to go to New York, but my parents didn't want me to, so they uh, got on board and talked to Elder Hastings. Elder Hastings talked to Elder Simons, and I was here for, on the train uh, within, I guess, 48 hours. Elder Hastings was my pastor at, at uh, Berean uh, Seventh-day Adventist Church. That's the church I went to um, in Charlotte. And he was, uh, he was, he was, he was a good pastor. I hated to leave him. Who Elder was? Simons was the, the head of, uh, of a Riverside Hospital. He was the, what do you call it? Uh, Yes, administrator. That's good. <laughs> the LPN course was 13 months, and we had uh, several teachers that uh, there were 21, 22 in my class, and all of us graduated except for one. And it was it was it was nice, and we it was was not an easy program, but you know, you had to do what you had to do. You had to really study, especially when we got on the floor. I graduated September, I think it was the 14th, 1963, four, I'm sorry, 1964, yeah. Uh, yes, uh, there, was, there were several whenever I graduated. I didn't have a job. I worked in uh, surgery. And, well, they didn't ha I didn't want to go into surgery at Baptist Hospital because that was really too big. It was, Riverside was small and it was easier to um, to go into it, you know, it wasn't so busy and everything. So I went out on the floor, uh, 6 South, which was an orthopedic floor, and uh, did my little do, and we had to, uh, uh, we were taught to bathe our patients, uh, to give them uh, uh, back rubs at when they get ready to go to bed, give them nourishments just before, and um, and to take care of the patient, whether it was male or female, whatever whatever job needed to be done, we we had to do that. So, you know, I was this nurse just coming here ready to take care of male patients just like I would to the female, and, and they thought I was odd, but it was, it was all right. 
Baptist Hospital. Yeah, it was Presbyterian Hospital. Let me get that straight. It was Presbyterian, and then they changed it to Baptist. I don't know how that happened, but they did. Yes, um, I worked at Baptist 42 years, and I worked on just about every floor that um, that was there, and I. Uh, was in the short stay unit that was transferred because I couldn't. The head nurse on the floor that I was at before I went to a short stay, I was, uh, how should I say it, unorganized. And that made everybody else unorganized. And so I, I asked my uh, supervisor if. I could be transferred, and I was, and I was transferred to a uh, short stay, and I did all sorts of things. You know, we admitted patients, got them ready for their surgery, which was either that next day or a week ahead or whatever. We got got them ready for for their um, uh, for their surgery. Drew, drew blood and took histories and you know, talk to them so they wouldn't be so, got orders from the doctors first and so that we would know what to do and and then we, we just went right on and do it, did it. Thorough, very thorough. My, our instructors did not, even though I can't remember their names, they did not take short cuts. You had to either learn it or, or just continue to do it until you got it, you know, you got it in place. Uh, I'll use an example, making beds and the sharp corners. That's not, that's not an easy thing to do. So, and especially when there's a patient in that bed and you, you have to make it so that it's, it's straight out and the corners are actually sharp. They're not, they, you put the sheet under the mattress and draw it up and, and put the, tuck it, and it has to be straight sharp. They didn't, she didn't allow us to not have it done right. And she would go along if it wasn't right. Take it right off. <laughs> Take it right off. Uh, Riverside Seventh Day Adventist Church. That was that was the one that I that I joined that I became a member of. I guess you call it a grandfather in it or whatever. But you know, I was a member. There were a lot of students that were not Adventists, but they had to go to church also, just like we did. I mean, you know, like we we do normally. They had to go to church. That was one of our requirements. They had to go to church on Sabbath? On the Sabbath. There was no training. It's just that it was one of our things. You had to get up and go and be seen at church. I mean, those other, the ones who were not Adventists. Now, I would, I would be there the whole sermon, but it, there were several others who would be. But the ones who weren't Adventists, they really, they had to go. Pastor Butler, Elder Lester, uh, there was a, there was two Butlers. That was his brother, they were brothers that was here. And uh, 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 let's see, uh, I'll say Pastor Butler. He was uh, he 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 was not to say that the other pastors were not as uh, uh, all too uh, comforting. But Pastor Butler was was once you you became 
comfortable in his uh, presence. You know, his, it was not, you could talk to him and, and didn't have to stand away. Uh, you know, just uh, and not be apart. Because other pastors, I would, I would not be, I was not as um, talkative to them as because I, I didn't, I didn't get to know them. It's not, you know, it's Riverside was a a family church, and I learned that real early. And I would, I, I was not. They, they uh, welcomed me, so I, so I was okay. Okay, but Pastor Butler was my favorite pastor. In the early days, I was an usher. I was a Sabbath school teacher um, for the kindergarten class, and I was, uh, uh, I joined the deaconess group and was, a deaconess, and later on in years I became head deaconess. So, um, and I was a secretary, church secretary for a while. But I, I, I could not uh, could not tolerate the um, the business meetings. There was a lot of um, when they are discussing is loud voices back and forth and that that um, uh, caused me to be very 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 nervous and so I, I gave that up I just couldn't handle it um, first when I came here the first the thing that I remember about the church it was uh, this brick building and it was standing along. It was little. I just thought it was a little church. Uh, but once you got inside, it was just like warm and welcoming. Uh, that has that that has uh, changed a little bit. You know, you 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 had, you that was the friends that you knew. You didn't. You, we didn't do as much as um, going out as, you know, in gathering and selling books and stuff as, as we did in, in Charlotte, as I did in Charlotte. But, but we, we had members and it got to be that the church was too small for the members that we had. We had, um, uh, it was a choir to sing every Sabbath. It wasn't one, two, or three choirs. It was just one choir for the children to add the adult choir to sing. Um, we had to get out. We the church was out at twelve o'clock noon because the cafeteria closes at one. Riverside has um, changed. We built a new building because the. Old Riverside had gotten church had gotten so small. I mean, you know, you were people were standing in the vestibule or downstairs listening to it, watching it on um, television. I think they had something down there. I'm not sure. And and they it was just really too small. And it was time to build another uh, chapel. And I was on the committee. I, I, get, I think it was uh, the, the uh, Bible studies that they were doing and, and different people would come into the, come into the church and the, when, when we were, once we got in the hospital working, the other students didn't have to go to church, so that changed, you know. And so there was a lot of empty seats, and and it just it just kind of just changed. Just and I just really didn't really realize it, but it did change. Uh, not uh, formally, but at work, if uh, 
there was a problem or if something came up, they, you know, they, Lynette, what do you think? And I would just, you know, not push the Bible on them, but give them a scenario where it should be done this way and, and accept it, you know, the right way and not the other way. So, and almost always someone would, if I meet someone, they'll say, what church do you go to? And I would have to tell the Riverside Seventh-day Adventist Church. I knew that you was a church member. I just knew it. It was just your personality and whatever, whatever. I don't know. It's Delois, whatever he did. Whatever. I was happy to be here. I was happy. I was 19 years old. It was my birthday when I landed my feet in Tennessee. I was that was my birthday. So, um, as um, I met and married my husband, and it was kind of a uh, going for a ride type things. All the girls in the car, and you know, we just went out for a ride to the park or whatever and uh, it was it was neat and we, we started dating after that and uh, started dating and seeing each other and I guess three years later we were well we were married. What's yeah. your anniversary date? Anniversary date was July no July June the twenty fourth in nineteen sixty seven is where we were married children to this marriage? Yes, one daughter and she, I don't want to tell her age. Well, well. Well, why don't you give us the full name of your husband and your daughter? My full name of my husband is Walter Richmond Jr. My daughter's name is Teresa Nicole Richmond. She liked to be called Nicole. Yes, she did. Uh, she grew up here. Uh, I brought her here every Sabbath. Uh, she went to F.H. Jenkins School. Um, there was one incident where, she, as she was a baby, where well, she wasn't a baby, she was about two years old, two or three years old, and she didn't want to sit down. I said, you need to sit down, just don't put your feet in the pew, uh, on the seat. And she wanted to see what was over there, so she stood up again, and I went outside, got me a sweet, and I planted her legs. And the pastor saw me, I think it was, it was pastor, it was, it was the other brother, Butler, um, Lecount. Lecount Butler, yes. What are you doing? I, she won't do, she didn't do what I said for her to do. You don't spank children at church. I said, I'll get you after church. But, you know, she didn't do it anymore. She, she, she learned I didn't have to speak. He took my switch and tore it up. So, such a stark difference. Um, in our church in Charlotte, uh, I have to use my family, my, my, my siblings. Uh, we were, we were, we were told what we could do and what we could not do, and what would happen if we did it in a way. And we knew that to be true. There would be a whipping. Uh, we had to sit. We sat on the front seat. That's so my father could see us from the choir loft and Mama would sit behind us, you know, so that, you know, she could kind of save us a little bit, just keep us from talking. And he would see who was being good or not, and, and uh, he would, but uh, you, get a, you get a whipping when you got home if you, if you was in the wrong, but now here, the kids here at Riverside are 
they are more outgoing. They don't sit by their parents anymore, you know. Uh, they, they are all over the church, you know. They are, it's since they've got, um, uh, Trina has, uh, Trina Winter has started the church school for the children, that kind of brought them sit in a, in a place. But before that, you, they, you never saw a child with its parents. They were always with their friend and that friend's parent, you know, it was maybe three or four of them and stuff. And, and that, um, and, and that was, that was one of the things that was, that was uh, different from uh, Charlotte's church, Korean. Nashville community, uh, uh, we did uh, some in-gatherings and, and, and studies that, not me per se, but there was a lot of Bible studies and, and going on in different areas of the, of the, of the city and, and we just got, you know, more people coming to church, to join church and, and everything, and, uh, and it was just, just got bigger. And that was, that was one difference. I mean, that's, that, uh, it really made a difference. We had a lot of, a lot of our uh, church members working at the conference. Um, uh, most of the pastors would, that would come through for meetings and things at the conference, they would be here at River, they would come to Riverside. They, they almost never went to uh, Hillcrest. Some went, but most stay here at Riverside. Um, there was always good eatings, meals and things, and, and they enjoyed that. When the hospital closed, it was um, it was a sad, sad, sad thing because they had tried so many times. They had the body, and somebody brought it out from under them, and then it's I, it was it was such a heartbreaking thing for them. And the ch church was was very unhappy that we did not obtain uh, the hospital. We did not keep the hospital. Um, I've learned that prayer is a is is not just a word. It's I've learned that it it is a communication with God and and that prayer does a lot of things that we can't do ourselves, you know, that we have conflicts with one person or another and you just have to pray to get it, get it together, you know, the way it should be. Um, my, for me, Riverside has been uh, kind of like a home. You know, I've, 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 uh, I've gone, you know, I've come to Riverside all my, all my, I almost could say all my life, all my adult life. And I've, uh, and I've, I've never wanted to go anywhere else. There have been several people that have, that have left the church and not the church, but moved to another church. and. I was, I've always said nobody and nothing could make me leave my church. I, you know, I would be here. And there were a lot of things that happened that would cause me to do that. But I, you know, I just stayed here and just kind of waited it out and prayed until it, until it got it together. And then it was all right. You know, it's, it's, 
you you have to just kind of wait on the Lord because He will He will make it make it all right, make things happen the way it should happen.